Hey everyone, so uh, yeah, Monster Hunter Stories 2 came out today, and you know, there, there's some stuff we could talk about with that game. Uh, reality is, I haven't played it for myself just yet, I, I do plan to get it, so um, we're not, we're not going to focus too much on you know the nitty gritty of that, but I do want to have a broader conversation about uh, third party support for the Switch moving ahead, because I feel like... Uh, in wake of, you know, the supposed Switch Pro uh, not coming out or, in some people's minds, not existing, uh, people are really concerned with the future of the Switch in years to come and how it's going to possibly get third-party support in wake of the fact that, hey, the current Switch and the new OLED Switch is pretty far behind the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And as, uh, you know, the older platforms in PlayStation 4 and Xbox One start losing support from multi-platform third-party games, then people are obviously concerned that's going to massively affect the library for Nintendo Switch moving ahead. And this is notable because there's actually quite a few third-party games that are selling over a million copies a pop, some way over that on Switch. Uh, so obviously it's going to be a concern that the library is going to be affected. And I also want to address, obviously, uh, concerns over the library for Switch where some people aren't even concerned about the third party. They just want Nintendo games to run well on Switch, uh, and talk about why I don't think we really need to be concerned with that. I think that's a bit overblown, but we will get into that, uh, after a reminder that we are giving away two copies of Skyward Sword HD. So head down to the description to enter. Now, look, obviously, uh, you know, some people are still not over the disappointment of no upgraded in terms of power, in terms of spec switch coming out. And, and whether or not all those reports and rumors were fake or at least to the point that there might be two models and one's coming later, it doesn't really matter what you believe. Uh, what matters is what is. And what is today is that we still have the normal Nintendo Switch and then we have the Nintendo Switch OLED coming out on October 8th. And that appears to essentially be a version 3 Switch that's likely going to replace that base model Switch in a year or two, similar to how the 3DS XL, uh, the DS XL, etc., how those platforms eventually replace the base models of Switch or of the DS and 3DS, that this is likely going to, you know, they're going to phase out that old model and I assume at least price cut the OLED model here in a year or two at most. Uh, I know that feels weird to say because they haven't price cut anything with Switch yet, but I do think that, you know, the moment that they can sell this thing for reasonable profits at 300, they're going to do that and then just phase out the old one. It doesn't make sense to keep making an LCD screen, you know, base switch that is 100% compatible with everything with the OLED switch at the same time with slightly different parts. It actually streamlines manufacturing to not do that. So it would make sense for Nintendo to phase out the current model of switch uh, eventually. And I think that's what's going to happen unless the OLED model uh, just ends up not selling well. But even then, I still think it's going to end up being a replacement. Now, Setting all of that aside, today, obviously, we have Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Rune came out. It's an 81 Metacritic game. Uh, it's essentially a Monster Hunter game for people who don't like Monster Hunter. That's what every review of it says. And that was true of the original Monster Hunter Stories as well. It's an RPG, uh, but it's a different kind of RPG. And it's a way that makes Monster Hunter uh, a, a type of IP that's more story-driven uh, and more, uh, you know, less driven by some of the um, loot, kill, craft, uh, that's kind of how, you know, Mon Monster Hunter, uh, works. Uh, it kind of takes that away and takes it down a more traditional RPG route. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, Wings of Rune appears to be the best version, uh, between the two that are out there, Monster Hunter Stories and now Monster Hunter Stories 2. This does appear to be the better one, at least according to the people who played the original. Uh, and I do think that we need to look at games like Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Stories. Uh, we need to look at games like Octopath Traveler. And we need to start looking at how third parties are really going to utilize switch moving forward i i do agree that obviously a lot of multi-platform games you know we've gotten the doom the doom 2016 doom, doom eternal uh all the stuff from bethesda we, we, we've gotten like civilization 6 I, I do think at some point 
yeah, Switch isn't going to get these games anymore because the developers have to make a choice. Now, it's interesting because you would think, well, look how well RE Engine's running on Switch, right? Like, why would they need to make a choice? Well, that's because uh, you need to, you know, cater your game to a certain audience and cater your game in a certain way. And I think what's going to happen moving ahead, and I actually think this is almost a net positive for Switch owners, is that third parties aren't going to leave Switch. Like, NIS America has been basically you know just throwing everything they have at switch now for like the last couple of years and that's just going to continue capcom's not going to stop supporting switch when they're seeing sales of, of things like monster hunter rise match the sales of monster hunter world that was multi-platform um yeah monster hunter world was on like three different platforms rise right now is on one it's going to eventually be on pc but right now it's on one platform and it's matching the sales and exceeding it in some categories so it's kind of like yeah, these companies aren't stupid. They're not going to abandon the Switch. And yes, we are going to see a lot more streaming games. Uh, I, I think if you look at, oh, you know, they're not going to stop releasing games on Switch. They're just going to be streaming games. And yeah, that's going to be a thing. It's already a thing, right? We just had a new streaming game announced, uh, you know, quite recently for Switch. So yeah, it, the streaming games are going to continue, but streaming is obviously not necessarily a replacement for playing games locally. It's just an option, a nice option, an option that, by the way, better with the OLED switch because uh, one thing that we don't talk about and well potentially better potentially better we, we need to say potentially because we don't know for sure right now what's not talked about is that while we can use a dongle uh, to to get Ethernet on our switch we're actually limited because it's USB 2.0 speeds and USB 2.0 can't hit the full spec of a gigabyte Ethernet port uh, in fact you're kind of stuck at like 60 megabytes a second so it, it's it's acceptable but not great uh so potentially and we don't know until it, until the dock is here that new dock potentially is going to give us a better internet a faster internet connection potentially we don't know what the controller is going to do maybe it's ended up still limited you know by usb 2.0 speeds but it seems pretty doubtful most local ethernet ports like that are the standard gigabyte variety so i presume we're actually going to end up with a better internet connection with this dock and they are selling the dock separately uh to me why would they sell the dock separately if there's not going to be an interest level for people with internet to be like hey this gives us a better internet connection than we can even get with a dongle people are kind of ignoring that fact that this actually might be a significant upgrade for online play especially for game streaming where you want that best possible connection so just keep that in mind in fact i have my router right by my systems very easy for me to wire every line of my internet in so yeah i, I, I would love uh, to have that dock just just to potentially get that extra speed for when i do decide to stream games or obviously play online maybe it'll help fix some of the online connection issues when people play online when they're playing docked i have no idea but what i do know is that we have to look at the potential for the future of the uh, of third-party games and start to realize probably what was always best all along are games that are made either if not exclusively for switch made for switch first and why would third parties choose to do that well because the switch is going to have 100 million plus people owning it and games continue to sell extremely well there's no reason you look at what monster hunter uh rise is doing what monster hunter stories is hopefully going to do you look at you know the sales of other games where, 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 where people are saying they're happy with the sales of these games you have to start to consider hey if you build something for that audience it's going to sell well and hey Based on the Monster Hunter Rise, it's going to look pretty good too. I mean, I still, you know, load up Monster Hunter Rise every now and then, and I wonder, man, this is really running on Switch. This is running on a Tegra from or, you know, X1 from 2015. Really? I, I I have a hard time even believing it. So that to me is what the future of third-party games are to be on Switch. They need to start making them for Switch first, and it's going to continue. Uh, we are going to get less native games. I'm I'm not going to sit here and deny that, but. I think that's a key thing to look on. Now, when we look at Nintendo's games, obviously one reason people really wanted a upgraded Switch was because of things like Age of Calamity not running the greatest, things like you know Super Mario Odyssey not hitting 1080p, things like Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 2 being a bit rougher on the edges at times, although the Torna DLC was much better, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was much better. Some people just want games to run a stable 30 FPS, let alone 60 FPS. Forget resolution, they just want stable frame rates. I get all of that, by the way. Uh, but when you saw footage for Splatoon 3, when you saw footage for Breath of the Wild 2, did any of us look at that footage and go, huh, yup, not possible. 
it's weird too because when you consider the footage of Breath of the Wild 2, and again, this is getting into that whole mm, man, the Switch Pro really gonna maybe it's still gonna happen. Maybe there's still gonna be an upgraded SLC, which by the way, I do think there will be, but that's neither here nor there. If you look at that footage of Breath of the Wild 2, it looks higher resolution than Breath of the Wild. It also looks like it might be running at a higher frame rate, or at least a more stable frame rate. Now, again, that doesn't really mean anything because obviously Breath of the Wild wasn't built from ground up for Switch, so it could just be, hey, look, they're actually taking advantage of the Switch hardware in ways they couldn't with the original that was built for Wii U, whatever. So there, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. But it, it, I, I go back and I watch that Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, uh, that one from E3, and I'm sorry, am I supposed to be upset that I'm getting that game on Switch or that I'm getting Splatoon 3. Now, the one game I am concerned about is Pokemon Legends Arceus, and we still haven't seen Pokemon Legends Arceus since the, uh, the since the reveal. We know it's coming out January 28th, but we haven't seen it again. And, yeah, it did look like it had some frame rate issues, um, and that is something that I am concerned about that, you know, I thought maybe an upgraded Switch could fix. But here's the deal. This feels weird saying because I own a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X, and a very gaming capable PC and a very gaming capable laptop. I mean, my laptop's got a, an RTX 2060 in it for crying out loud. Uh, I've got a 5700 XT in my editing rig. Like I have all the powers to game at 4K uh, if I want. Although the 2060, I wouldn't necessarily say is a 4K card, but you know what I mean. Like I, I can game at 4K in multiple ways in my house and I love technology and I love doing that and I get all the FPS and all the FPS I want I get it right whether it's in the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or gaming PC mess with the settings get 200 300 FPS right like I have all the frame rates I have all the resolution in my house as a gamer but I'm going to say something and maybe this is a bit controversial resolution and frame rate does not a great game make now look, they make games better. Crisper, smoother experiences absolutely are better. But I'm pretty excited about the future. I mean, Metroid Dread, Breath of the Wild 2, Sparks of Hope, Splatoon 3. These are mega games that are going to sell likely 10 million copies each. Monster Hunter Stories 2 might even sell 5, 6, who knows? Does it, does it get to 10 million plus? I have no idea. Like, these games are all going to sell incredibly well, be extremely popular. We have a new Mario Party game coming up, by the way, which to me looks better than the last Mario Party game, which I thought was a return to form for the Mario Party series in general. And now we have all this online stuff being done with it. It looks like it's being done right uh, in a way they didn't do with Mario Golf Super Rush, which they're made by a completely different teams, so I'm not really surprised. Uh, yeah, like... That's that. The, the, it looks like they're doing things right with the games, and while a Switch Pro could make those games better, they're not going to make the games themselves better than they already are. Let me explain. Higher resolution and better frame, like 60 FPS, full 1080p for Breath of the Wild 2 is better than 30 FPS and 720 to 900p, right? It is better from a factual technical statement, but it doesn't factually make the game better. Does this, that make sense? Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be just as great of a game at 30 FPS and 720p as it would be at 1080p and 60 FPS. Give you an example. People can emulate and play the Wii U version of Breath of the Wild on their PCs at 4K 60 plus FPS. I've seen it. I've experienced it. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And I love it. But it doesn't make the game better. It's still the same game. Immortals Phoenix Rising, I feel like that's a great example, is on Switch. And it factually runs at higher resolutions, better frame rates on all the other platforms, making it a better experience on those platforms. And that's true. And I don't deny that. But it's not a better game because of it. Frame rate and resolution does not make games good. It can add polish. It can add better experiences, more responsive controls, but you know, smoother gameplay. This is all true, and those are all things we should want. And this is one reason why we want an upgraded Switch, just to get these smoother experiences and these crisper images, and hopefully some anti-aliasing finally on Nintendo games, right? We want this stuff. I want this stuff. 
but none of it makes the games better games. Breath of the Wild was game of the year without that stuff. It'd be game of the year with it, but it doesn't change how good the game is. Immortal Phoenix Rising is still an amazing experience on Switch, just like it is on everything else. Starlink is still an amazing, you know, Battle for Atlas is still a really good game on Switch. It's not necessarily, in fact, it's arguably better on Switch because of the Star Fox content, but it's not necessarily a better game on the other platforms just because it looks a little prettier. Great games are great irregardless of resolution and frame rate. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here where absolutely I want that. But also, as long as Nintendo is fully supporting the Switch, that's what I really want. Nintendo has a tendency that as platforms age, they stop supporting them. They stop giving them big games. They stop locking down Monster Hunter Stories 2 and Rise. They stop, they, they, they stop throwing support behind their platforms as they get to year five, as they get to year six. Instead, we're going to be in year five heading to year six, and Switch looks like it might be trying to repeat 2017 all over again. It doesn't look like Nintendo has any plans to slow down Switch support anytime soon and to me that's what matters more than a switch pro that's what matters more than oh my gosh next gen oh my gosh got to compete with playstation 5 and xbox series x but by the way i'm on record of saying that you know if switch pro is real and does exist it's not competing directly with those platforms anyways nintendo isn't competing with third-party platforms they're competing with themselves and trying to keep themselves relevant and do things that make their own games better. And yes, we just talked about all the ways that I do think it does make their games better, but it doesn't make the game a better game. It's just a smoother experience, at least for me. Now, I'm very sensitive to frame rate drops, and I notice them like crazy. Uh, that's why I, I was pretty critical of Pokemon Legends Arceus. It had some of the worst frame rate drops I have seen in a Switch exclusive game. Uh, in a reveal trailer like even Xenoblade Chronicles 2 which has some ha, has some pretty stark drops uh, wasn't like Legends Arceus trailer like this is a reveal trailer normally reveal trailers are trying to really get you hyped and show you um, the best the game can possibly look at that exact moment and the best it could look at that exact moment was massive frame rate drops uh, so I, I'm I, I again 60 plus FPS 4k give it to me but Again, the games can be just as good without it. So I'm excited that Nintendo's continuing to support. I think third-party games are going to just go more the route of either straight-up streaming or they're going to go the route of obviously just focusing on making Switch versions uh, first before any other platform. So yeah, if, if anything else, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X owners should actually be upset about the Switch more than, more, more than uh, Switch owners because I'm going to tell you guys something. Everyone talks about how PlayStation is the leading platform. Guess what? Switch is a current platform. It is current, just like PlayStation 5 is current, just like Xbox Series X is current. doesn't matter if you think they're part of the same generation. They're all being sold as current platforms today. That means Switch is the current market leader today. 100 plus million units. Third party games are selling well. Third parties aren't going to continue to ignore Switch. So... Guess what's going to happen to your PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? You think like Monster Hunter World or whatever. I mean, you know what they're going to want to do with the next Monster Hunter game? They're going to want to make it for Switch. And the other platforms. So you know what they're going to end up doing? Making it for Switch first and holding back some of the capabilities of it on the other platforms. That's what's going to end up happening. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X owners should actually be more worried about Nintendo not upgrading their Switch than Switch owners because they're the ones that are going to actually be counteractively impacted so long as Switch is the leading platform in the marketplace and so long as third-party games continue to sell very well on that platform because third parties go where the money's at. Third parties want, the devs want all the power to work with. But the publishers, they just want the green and they're going to go where the green's at. Where do you think more money can be made right now making a game exclusively or first for playstation 5 or making it for switch eventually it might be true go with playstation 5 maybe in three years but right now yeah you're gonna make more money if you make it for switch look what monster hunter did look what monster hunter stories 2 is about to do you're gonna make more money making it for switch and if you want to bring it to the other platforms later they're not going to be as good as they would be if you were to just made them just for those platforms I think the opposite's happening, folks. 
I think what you're going to see, and this isn't true of everything, Assassin's Creed, and all, they're always going to focus on those platforms. But I think what you're going to see is more and more games are going to be made for Switch first and then brought to the other platforms and held back because of it. I think Switch owners, we're going to be just fine. Especially as long as Switch continues to be a massive seller in the marketplace. Anyway, folks, I'm Nathan Robojax from the Center Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.